to start with you. You've said that one of your hopes for this series is to introduce Token to a new generation. How has his work impacted you as a storyteller and why do you think it stood the test of time? Oh, I, uh, I think his work has impacted me as a storyteller um, because it started a lifelong love of language. I mean, it, maybe that that love was there before I read Tolkien and it just it happened to come out with his works, but certainly um, it, it started this love of language in me and, and of fantasy as well. Um, and so, um, yeah, so this it started this love of Tolkien for me um, and language for me. And um, I'm a teacher, so I, when I'm, when I'm not performing, and so I, um, really hope that that a show like The Rings of Power can actually transfer some of that love to to the kids that I teach or the kids that that have maybe haven't been introduced to his works yet. And I think it stood the test of time because of um, well, I mean, there's there's the bigger themes of good and evil that that people find really fascinating. Um, there's you know the themes of friendship and loyalty. There's there's love, but there's also the struggle within oneself, how to do the best within oneself, and how to fight the darkness within oneself. Um, how far you're willing to go into the darkness to do what's right. I think that he speaks a lot to the human condition, and I think that's why he's still so universal now, many many years after he first wrote yeah. them. And hopefully for a new generation of fans who will watch the Rings of Power and then get introduced to his works that way. Great answer. Markella, for you, you know, a lot of the series was shot on location and the setting itself feels like its own character. How helpful was that as you stepped into your character's shoes? It was very nomadic in nature. It was incredibly helpful. I mean, I think you just you said it exactly how I felt is that the environment was like a character in our world. So, um, yeah, it was just it was so amazing to be able to to go there every day and feel like I was actually in Middle Earth and not be able to tell where the set began and where the environment, the actual landscape began. So it was really began. So it was um a really uh it was in, it was just incredibly helpful to to help support bringing these characters to life and bringing my characters to life. So I just loved it. I can't wait for people to see that and to mm. be able to go, wow, that was actually. It's it's a beautiful landscape. We were privileged, so privileged to shoot in New mm -hmm. Zealand. Megan, for you, you discovered a lot of your character through movement. Can you talk a little bit about the physicality of this role in that process? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> um, <laughs> I <laughs> I love this process. I definitely, um, yeah, as you said, found it through movement and really built it from the ground up. So our movement director, Lara, um, it was brilliant. She gave us a couple of sources at the very beginning of just sort of like generic half foot movement. Um, and the first one was to walk like a five-year-old child. Um, and that was sort of the base. And the second was meerkats and their sharpness. Um, and I really love that for Poppy because she's very cautious, but she's also very observant too. And I think that was really relatable. And then, you know, she would then like set up the room with like obstacles and would be like, okay, now you're running away from this thing. Or she would be like, and now you're running towards this thing or now you're picking up this thing. And so you really did get to build the character through that. And every single half foot has different movement. They walk differently, they sit differently, they run differently. So it's, it was really fascinating to be able to, um, to do that. And also I've never had the opportunity to, to play um, a character who's not human, you know, mm. they're creatures. Yeah. Mm. So it was really exciting to be able to really explore that and develop mm. that and to, yeah, to, to really, it really, you know, tingled my senses and allowed me to really get into Poppy. And, you know, every day I'd do stretches or I'd, you know, sort of before <laughs> takes, I'd do like a hand flick and a bum wiggle and that would be <laughs> Poppy. And then I'd, you know, so it was, it was so helpful. Um, I loved it. I loved that experience. And I hold it very close to my heart. I got one final question for you. And it's a question for the group. You've all said in the past how collaborative this set was. How did that openness and environment allow you to take agency over your characters? Oh, wow. Mm. In so many ways. Um, it allowed us to talk to the showrunners about the world that they developed and the characters that they created, specifically in relation to ourselves. Um, it, it allowed me to, to talk to my fellow castmates in the half foot world to discuss um, the, the nuances of, of the text, uh, of their relationships, of um, their world. Mm. Um, yeah, and also it, 
I mean, you know, you just said it yourself about collaboration. There are so many people who are a part of Poppy, who helped create Poppy. And so you're also, I also felt as an actor that I was sort of carrying those people and those people's wisdoms and mm. um, and their level of detail within the character too. And that really, that really helped flesh it out as much as possible and as wide um, and 360 as possible. Mm. Yeah. I agree with both of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs>